Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Camilla, and today I'll be talking to you about Chapter 7 of the IGCSE ICT syllabus, which is System Life Cycle. A uh, system life cycle is, in a way, similar to any other life cycle. It is continuous, or a loop, and it also has the same phases for each cycle. It begins with analysis, then design, development and testing, implementation, documentation, and then evaluation. And then for however long that you use the system, before the users will think, hmm, we need a change. We need to update the system. And so they'll contact somebody to make a new system for them. And so the cycle begins again with analysis. So as an analyst, your task is to ensure that you know what your client wants. You've got to go figure it out, figure out what are the problems. You kind of have to be a detective, investigate. You have to see what changes need to be made. You've got to watch how people use the system or ask them questions. So here are some methods of collecting data. You can give them a set of questions. Um, however, there are drawbacks to each, which I will actually mention. With questionnaires, um, you can reach a wide audience, but you have to go through lines upon lines upon lines of their explanation if you give them an open-ended question. But if you only give them multiple choice, then you won't be able to understand their reasoning for their choice, or they may not feel like they have enough options. With interviews, this can be combated, as you can ask them specifically. But depending on the amount of time that you have, depending on the amount of people that you see, this could also be super, super time consuming. With observation, you simply have to watch the people use the current system and decide and try and figure out how it works. However, this also has drawbacks like any other thing because they may not use every single feature of the system. So you may not actually get a accurate representation of how the system works. And lastly, we have looking at an existing manual. So every single time that a new system is created, we have something called a technical documentation. This is everything that is technical about the system uh, going into one document. And in order to make changes to the system or to start a new one, you can look at this document, you can refer back to it. So this is another method of collecting data as you can simply look at the instruction manuals or operating instructions and try and see how it works. Phase two would be design. This can only happen if you fully understand what your customer wants. And as some people say, you do not need to throw the baby out with the bathwater. Meaning, if there are certain elements of the previous system that you like, there is no need to throw every single thing out. You can keep whatever is still working and usable. And as you transfer data between mediums during the design process, some errors might occur. And so we need verification. There are two types of verification. We have a visual check, which is, you may think is similar to proofreading, but not, and I'll show you how. Visual checks is when you scan it with your eyes <laughs> and then you compare it to the original document that you took your data from and you check for any differences. A proofread would be if you read it and you try and figure it out in your brain and see what the mistakes are. That would be for stuff like typos or grammatical errors. Then we have double entry. This is when we have two different people enter the same data and then we compare those data together and make sure that there are no differences between them and everything is the same. Next up, we have validation. This is to make sure that when you input data, it meets the specific criteria that is set. So imagine that you are entering a password, right? Typically, there is a length check. This checks the number of characters. Usually, it'll say no less than eight characters. And then we have a format check. Um, if you're entering a date of birth, then you've got to enter maybe the month first before the day. And so if you do it the other way around, then the system will notify you. A digit check is to make sure that the number is correct and you just didn't swap down, swap around any numbers. A presence check is very simple, just making sure that everything is filled and there are no blanks. Character check. Um, 
for, ex for example, if you forget to put your at sign when you are writing your email, or if somehow a slash ends up in your name, and then we have range check just to make sure it's within the specific range that is set, and a lookup check. This would be for stuff like emails or IC numbers. So they would check within the database and make sure that whatever data that you've entered is actually real and exists. Within development and testing, um, system will usually be de designed in modules and then these modules will be tested and combined. So essentially what this means is when the system is designed and they ask the client what they want, they will combine the different modules together and see whether everything is working out, what changes would the client like to make, are there elements that the client would like to keep, and then they go back and change it. So with this, there are different types of data checks that happen. So for example, if you have a range, a range from 1 to 10, we would have data checks that would occur. We have normal data when you enter your data in. If you enter number 3, 4, or 5, or 6, 7, 8, 9, 2, <laughs> then that would be considered normal data. If you enter something abnormal like 45, or January, or purple, of course, that's not even a number, then that would be considered abnormal. We've got extreme data. Now, you may be wondering why I didn't mention 1 and 10 earlier. It's because they would be considered extreme data. They are data that is on the border of um, acceptability. That is a hard word to say. And then lastly, we've got live data. Live data is when you enter in data that you already know the answer to, but you are just checking and testing your system. So if you enter, for instance, 7, that would be considered normal data. But because you already know what it is, that would also be considered live data. Okay, next up we've got implementation, which is the process of changing from the current system to the new one. We've got direct, which is immediate. You say, all right, from this week onwards, we are not using the old system anymore. We're going to use the new one. Now, this can be a little bit troublesome. Just if something goes wrong with the new system, then there's nothing that people can use anymore. We also have pilot, which is when you test run it in another branch. So let's pretend that we have like two branches of McDonald's. So if they're using a new system um, in the old branch, and it, sorry, if in two different branches, if they use the old system in one branch and then a new system in another branch, we would consider that a pilot because we are observing how the second branch is reacting to the new system. And then once everything is running smoothly, then only would the other branches also start to use the new system. We've got parallel when both systems run simultaneously together. Uh, this can be a bit costly and also maybe a bit difficult for people who do not want to use the new system and they'll just stick to the old one and then they, once the old one is gone, they may not know how to operate the new system. But then there's also one last one. There is phased, which is when you introduce it step by step. So just like previously with collecting data, you kind of just have to look at your company and how everything is running and then decide which implementation method you would like to choose. Okay, we've got documentation now. I mentioned technical documentation earlier. This is to assist people if there are any changes that need to be made or for future developers, like in this case, during the analysis process, if that is what you choose to do. And then we also have user documentation, which is kind of just like an instruction manual for us normal people to operate the new system and figure out how it all works. It's an operation for us. Okay, so here are some things that we would find in the technical documentation. This is basically just how the system works technically. We would have the system flow chart and output formats and everything of such. And then with the user documentation, we have how to load and install the software. We have troubleshooting guides because of course, if something goes wrong, we need to figure out how to fix it ourselves. And then there are things that are in both, such as the purpose of the system, like what it's supposed to do and how it's supposed to help us. And then also hardware and software requirements. If there's any additional things that you need to install or get for the system to work properly. Okay, the last one would be evaluation. When the system is up and running, you still have to come back to evaluate how everything is going. If 
there's anything that needs to be smoothened out, if we need to schedule maintenance for another month or two, then that is what the evaluation is for. It's sort of like saying, goodbye, system. This is your time to shine on your own. No more help anymore. Until eventually our system gets older and older and a new one has come to take its place. Okay, so questions. All right. So I want you to imagine that you are a system analyst and you are trying to research the current system. So we are in the first phase of the system life cycle. How would you do that? You've got four options. This is a four mark question. Go ahead, take your time and I'll be revealing the answer now. Okay, so we've got observation, right? When you watch people, interviews, asking them directly one-on-one, Question is kind of like surveys and then examining an existing technical documentation. All right, all right. And then next up, let's assume that we've got a scoreboard, right? And this scoreboard assumes that everybody will score at least one, but no more than 30. So I've, got, I've given you some data here and I want you to tell me what types of data are these figures? Okay, so, all right, now A would be 37. 37 is abnormal because it says no more than 30. 37 is more, therefore abnormal. Anything like negative 4 would also be abnormal. Green would also be abnormal. And then we have extreme. 30 is an accepted answer or an accepted data. However, it is on the border of acceptability, so therefore considered extreme. And then we have normal, anything that is more than one but less than 30, anything in the middle, 29, 28, 27, all the way down to 4, 3, 2, would be considered normal data, just like 26. Okay, that is all. Thank you very much for listening. Jazakumullah. And I hope I did a good job and you understand now. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.